Nathan, have you been at the pump recently? Yeah, unfortunately I have. I swooned, dude. I swooned. I, I, we, we've got the highest price for both gas and higher diesel prices ever. It's it's mind-bogglingly expensive out there. Yeah, thank God we do not live in California. I, I have a friend who lives in San Francisco, and oh my God. the prices there are absolutely eye-watering. Yeah, yeah. So in this uh, podcast slash video, we are going to be talking about uh, the most and least fuel-efficient uh, trucks uh, that you can buy. Uh, Andre is at the work truck show, so I'm stepping in for him. So uh, I apologize if uh, you know, my expertise isn't as deep, but you did all the research for this because we did a series of videos. Yes, we did. Where we went through the different vehicles uh, and how fuel efficient they are. So uh, in this video, like I said, podcast, we're going to be talking about the least and most fuel efficient trucks. We'll start with midsize and work our way to full size and, of course, heavy duty trucks. That is correct. Now, uh, in the video series that we put out, which was Running on Empty, yes. <laughs> or TFL Presents Running on Empty, uh, all of the trucks we're covered. So we're talking about heavy duty, which are not rated by the EPA, but we have real world experience. And so we actually rated them thanks to Andre and his <laughs> anal retentive love of numbers. So he went and actually put everything together. So we actually have that. And that is on TFL truck. And we can talk about towing too, because a lot of people right. tow for a living or they tow for pleasure or they tow for vacation. So we can talk about towing. We know that as well. Right. I think we're the, probably the most comprehensive source for uh, towing information. I would say beyond anybody else. Now, here's the funny part, dude. Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts and of course everybody's talking about like how to save fuel right now. And mm -hmm. some, some of the advice is, you know, pretty straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, combined trips. Yeah, sure. Right? I mean, that sure. Obviously, you don't run out and get milk, get it once a week, whatever. Uh, and some of it is kind of like um, head scratching. So uh, I was listening to one of the podcasts and they were saying, keep a half a tank of fuel uh, in your car because you want to be able to kind of play the market. So if prices go down, uh, you can then, you know, I don't see prices. <laughs> Do you remember back in the 70s with yeah. the earlier, or the, well, one of the old OPEC issues? When they, the gas crisis was happening, people were doing that as well with the same type of thing. And people were running out of gas halfway to work because of that. Because they're like, well, I was just waiting to see if the market would drop a little bit and I could get eight cents off per gallon. Yeah. yeah, it's not worth it to call AAA or whatever and have to come out and get you. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I would say, you know, just uh, probably buy more gas. <laughs> if you want to fuel up, you know, do it now as opposed to five days from now because chances are that. The prices are going to be We haven't seen the future. peak quite yet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I, like this idea of playing the market by keeping half a tank seems kind of silly. And then, of course, you got all this advice like, you know, no jackrabbit starts. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And, yeah, they, and, and stay smooth on the gas. Well, it's, smooth, you know. Well, we have a friend who's really good at hypermiling. Yes. Um, and Wayne. Yeah, Wayne. And, and he is. Don't do what he does. Don't do what he does because no. he goes 35 on the, on the freeway. Um, well, no, he, he drafts trucks. <laughs> he does. Like two feet behind but it, the rear bumper. There's some very simple advice out there that, that is easy, okay? Just try to drive near the speed limit. Um, try not to be, uh, you know. That. It's exponential, so the faster you go, the more fuel you're going to burn. right. And make sure your tires are properly inflated. That's a good one. You know, uh, there, there's some basic things. Also, take crap out of your car. You know, I mean, my, my daughter's car, which is electric, by the way, so I have no problems. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll, I'll do that later. No, but seriously, um, she, uh, she has about... 100 pounds worth of crap in there. Seriously, it's just stuff. Yeah, and yeah, sure. If it were a gas car, if I pulled that out, she would get better mileage at the pump. The lighter the vehicle, the more efficient the vehicle is. It's just that simple. Or how about if you've got a truck, rooftop tent, take it off. Oh, totally yeah, lag. racks, take, take them off. Know, take them off, yeah. Right. I mean, those things are like, you know, aerodynamic monsters into the wind, right? They just it, rob you of not probably more than one or two fuel MPGs. And then there's things like, you know, tailgates, we, you know. We, it, it, yeah. There's been research done on that, and it depends on the truck and uh, its aerodynamic qualities yeah. and all that. But you know what? Uh, covers. Maybe hold off on that giant lift you're about to get or, yes. those, or putting the 37s on there. Maybe hold off on that if you want to get slightly better mileage. And that's actually not a bad idea. If you mm -hmm. do have, like, if you put a lift on your truck, mm -hmm. right, and you went to 37s, <laughs> God help you, 39s, yeah. maybe bring it down a couple inches. Take down a notch, yeah. It's well, well it's it's surprising. Uh, there are people out there who are in the process of beefing up the truck. So if you hold off for the next month or two, you know, hopefully if world events mellow out and things change, uh, perhaps you'll get those back uh, good prices back. But it's a very interesting thing because there's a lot more that you can actually do to save gas. One of which is do not buy some of the vehicles we're going to be talking about on this podcast. 
Yes. All right. Well, let's get let's get into those vehicles. I, I can end the podcast now by saying TRX. Don't buy a TRX. <laughs> yeah, just, just stop. Yeah, it, Nathan, we have a TRX. The value is going down every it, day. <laughs> as we stay, as it sits in our garage, it's actually costing us money gas wise. It's just, yeah, it, it, oh, yeah. I think what we're going to do is I think we have gas in the tank. We'll probably siphon it out. Siphon it out and try to pay for some of the truck of it. Yeah, I know but the it, difference. A more efficient vehicle. Boy, is that thing inefficient. But you know what? If you do one of those bro trucks and you, you did do a lift on it, mm-hmm. maybe you've got those old wheels and tires you can slam those back on for the next few months it'll look silly but <laughs> well it's like not like it doesn't look silly now but oh, in some cases ouch. i'm sorry i really have an issue with some of those um bro dozers but um yeah look guys you know we we, we hope that we can cover a few of these vehicles out there maybe even um edify you and give you some information that you may not have known about with some of these trucks. Some of them are remarkably efficient. So let's start with the smallest class, the new right. compact truck class. And I feel bad about this because the most efficient truck outside of electric trucks, which are also on Obtanium right now, but let, you know, trucks that you can sort of kind of get uh, are these new compact trucks, the Maverick, right? right. The hybrid Maverick is incredibly it's efficient. Remarkably efficient. We, we've had a few. Um, we've had a lot of time with it. and we. What is it, like 40? Is it in the 40s? We were getting, I averaged yeah. 40 miles per gallon. I, I had it for a few days, ran it around, had my family in it. And this is a front wheel drive hybrid. Essentially, this is a vehicle that has the drivetrain out of a Ford Escape. Mm-hmm. Actually, Which a lot you just of, had too. Which I just had as well. Um, but it, it is um, a very, it's very similar to like the Toyota RAV4 hybrid and whatnot in terms of its design. It's a very efficient setup. I believe you can get around 43 miles per gallon combined. Wow. Um, truck. Yeah, and that's with some city driving. But I drive a lot of highway, um, and I was getting 40 miles per gallon, 39 miles per gallon, and I drove the crap out of it. And you know, Roman, I'm not slow. And it's just such a great little truck. I am thoroughly impressed with it. It was our truck of the year at TFL for good reason. It does have a brother that has a turbocharged engine. Uh, that is not the same vehicle. Um, that, that one is all-wheel drive. Yeah. Well, you can get front-wheel right. drive with it, too. But, but, but the hybrid's always front-wheel drive. Yeah, yeah the, and, that, and that's kind of unfortunate that you can only get the hybrid with front-wheel drive. But, man, it's just such a smart little truck, and it gets such great mileage. So that's but a good news. It's yeah. a good news. But the bad, bad news is, yeah, they stop taking orders, and mm. dealers are marking them up if they have them. Yeah, they're, they're, they will absolutely get you at the door with that. So uh, it may take time before you can get your Maverick <laughs> by the time the crisis is over. over and we'll be yeah, back no. down to reasonable gas prices. But still, it's still a logical truck to get because you get ridiculous range with it, and it's just a good little driver. You, you know what? Um, Less than apparently the oil producers didn't learn last time, right? So last time this happened was, what, 2008? You know, mm-hmm. now we shot above those fuel prices. But there comes a point where people start making buying decisions based on how much per gallon they're paying at the pump. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we've exceeded that point. And, and what happened was that people changed their buying decisions and changed their driving habits. So all those oil-producing countries all of a sudden then had to face 10 years of, like, you know, $50 a barrel or $60 a barrel, and somehow they seem to have forgotten that lesson because this is what's going to happen again, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. The fat cats are going to suffer, and there are more alternatives out there. Back in the day, uh, in 2008, there wasn't a whole lot out there. Um, it was the Prius that hit super, super high market value overnight. I remember that. I remember yeah, that. they were everywhere, and they, they the Prius V and all these other Prius, the Prius C, they built all these different Prius, and they did it specifically because and they all had those a, cars. If you, you know, we're talking about trucks, but all yeah. those cars are still out there, right? Well, those, those, those models are on Craigslist right now. Yep. So obviously they're probably going to carry a premium. But, oh yeah, but they're out there, and you know, it's not like we. Well, when that happened last time, we didn't really have a lot of choice, right? There were Priuses, but they were at the dealer. There weren't a lot of used ones. It was like the second generation, and we were in the third generation. Right. The first one being in Japan. Uh, anyway, we'll save that for the car show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the point is, is that um, there are more alternatives now, and more alternatives are coming. And I have a feeling people will have a longer memory this time because there are even more um, sharply um, – 
created world events that are in your head and you know what's going on and you know that it's affecting gas so, prices. So, so for all those fat cats out there who, you know, are are rolling in dough, charging 130, 140, 150 a barrel, uh, you know, enjoy it now because it's going to go the other way. I yeah. Think, I think people are going to. Anyway, uh, did you see what was in the garage? Did you see what? I did. And uh, I have some questions about yeah. it, but uh, it, I'm... It, We've been talking about getting this for a while. Yeah, Hyundai loaned us uh, the second truck in this class, which right. is the Santa Cruz for a year, and we finally got it yesterday. Now, the one we got is the turbo. It's not the base model. It's a turbo, yeah. Right. So there is a base model that has a slightly more efficient engine that runs on... One MPG. We looked it up. One MPG. Well, nowadays, <laughs> that matters. It matters. It's, it's not like... So it gets... Tw I think the one we have, the turbo, gets 22... And I want to say the combined. Uh, combined. Yeah. And I want to say that the, the non turbo gets 23. Right. And I believe you can get the non turbo with a front wheel drive, which is, is rare as 10. Yeah. And it's a little bit better. But so you why? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know. But Any, anyway, so that's the other truck in this yeah. class. Uh, and, you know, at 23, 22. Uh, that's not much better than regular mid sized trucks. In mm -hmm. fact, there are some mid sized trucks that outperform those numbers. So let's talk about mid sized trucks. So yes. Let's talk about the, the, the kind of. Um, the one that's the king of mid-sized trucks right now, the Tacoma. What, what are we looking at in terms of fuel economy? And I don't think it's good. No. Uh, well, it's combined MPG. Now, this is not the top of the line Pro 4X with everything on it because the more TRD stuff. Pro. TRD Pro. Pro 4X. Wow. We'll, we'll get to the Nissan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Seriously. I just. Yeah. Um, I do the same thing. It's Pro 4X. TRD, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the point is, is that uh, with the TRD Pro. Yeah. Um, but the closest we could come to assuming what the TRD get. Uh, TRD Pro gets was from Toyota themselves and from the EPA, 20 miles per gallon combined, which is good-ish. However, there are a couple things to keep in mind. I have never had a Toyota Tacoma get 20 miles per gallon combined, ever. It's always been 18, 17, 16 miles per gallon combined. Granted, I do drive a little bit on the Savage side, but still... That's kind of a, a point. And compared to the other trucks out there that compete in its class, it's nowhere near the top. There are a lot of other trucks. Yeah, out so there. so what, where's the Frontier? Where's the Ranger? Mm. Where's the Colorado? Where's the Canyon? Well, um, what's interesting is that the Frontier is um, about one mile per gallon better than the uh, Tacoma. And that's for the uh, Pro 4X, right? right? Yeah. Okay. So you're a 21 ish. ish yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, all these trucks are in the let's say 19 to 21 range. Right. But would you believe a Jeep Gladiator is capable of getting 24 miles per gallon combined? Is that the diesel? Yes, it is. Ah. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. That, that, but, but you'll pay a premium for that. Yes, you will pay a ton for that. That's one of the problems. Is that you pay a premium it, for it when you buy it, and you'll right now servicing. diesel is service twice. So diesel service. Twice as expensive. It, it can be, yeah. Yeah, easily. Parts, labor, mm -hmm. 2x for what uh, the gas version would be. And for some reason, diesel is running much higher than gas nowadays. So while you'll get better fuel economy, you're going to pay a lot more for diesel. So uh, what does the, the Canyon slash Colorado get? Uh, so the, the Canyon Colorado diesel uh, can get up to 24 miles per gallon combined. But we've had much better experiences with it. Um, we had a GMC Canyon. Yeah. Uh, it won our truck of the year, one of our first years yep. of doing it. Um, and it was a 4x4, four four, and it was fully loaded. And on the highway, we were getting over 30 miles per gallon. 30 miles per gallon on the highway with that truck. Diesel. It was a little diesel. Um, it wasn't the full-blown, you know, it's not its sister, the, the Z, uh, ZR2. The ZR2 does not get as good mileage. In fact, it gets pretty crummy mileage by comparison. That's because it's got tons of stuff on it, yeah. right? It's heavier. It's got off-road components, wheels, tires. tires. Yeah. yeah. So, but if the regular four-wheel drive GMC Canyon, as an example, capable of getting 30 miles per gallon on the highway or more, really impressive stuff. Did you happen to look up the Honda Ridgeline to see what that was doing? Uh, the Ridgeline is very, it, it's, the last time I checked, I think it was uh, 23 combined, but I might be off by one. And if we only had a device that we could look up as we're talking. All right. I'll but the up. last Ridgeline I drove, uh, I drove about 150 miles on it, and I believe at the pump I was about 22 mpg. And that was because I was hauling about, I don't know, five, six hundred pounds worth of stuff. So I'm at fueleconomy.gov and I can, I can, mm -hmm. look, up, I can look up uh, the vehicle. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, a lot of the stuff that we researched, we went directly through fueleconomy.gov. Yeah. 
and you can look up directly what the vehicle is up to 2023 models and not, not all the models are there that's one of the issues of course so for instance certain high performance off-road versions of trucks won't be listed a really good example of that is like the chevy uh, silverado trail boss it's not on there per se but then you find there's a chevy silverado rated for mud terrain tires that we assume is the trail boss. So it's a little, sometimes it's a little fishy when you're looking at the uh, You were numbers. close, Honda Ridge Line's 21 combined. Is it 21 combined? Like okay. I said, all these trucks are between 20, you know, 19 and 21. Now, right. the one that's gonna be by far, and if I actually I think remember the number, uh, most fuel efficient is of course the Rivian. I think it's 90, no, 60, 60, Andre just told me, 60, it's, a, it's in the 60, 63 MPGE or the equivalent. And look, yeah, we know there's a whole lot of other things that go with electric vehicles. We, we don't want to muddy the water with that. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the most important thing about the Rivian is it's by far the most fuel efficient truck you could buy because uh, uh, they just basically took a guess at the new Hummer EV and that's 47 MPGE. So the Rivian is more fuel efficient. Uh, Which but, doesn't surprise me. It doesn't weigh as much. But, I mean, but that... the problem is you can't get either of them, dude. I mean, yeah. I hate talking about these things because it's like, well, I just read a story where apparently the Hummer EVs, you know, they're, they're slowly rolling them out and they're like, and I knew this would happen. There are people like, it's like a G-Wagon. People are buying them for twice allocations, mm-hmm. which, which GM said shouldn't happen, but dealers and people are selling their reservations for up to $60,000. So at some point, you know, if you've got that much money, do you really care about fuel economy? If you're paying 350000 for a Hummer EV, do you really care what the fuel? You, no, they no. don't. No, those people are usually, they want the newest toy on the block. And an awful lot of people out there are spoiled enough to where they can just afford to do it and not care. So I, I think they, they I, don't care about fuel. So I think we have to take those kind of. And, and move them off the table. Yeah, exactly. I would say that in six months, when the Ford Lightning and, uh, and, and once other vehicles start catching up in yeah. terms of numbers, then we can talk about more electric vehicles and how they're actually performing. And MPGE is a little bit murky in terms of how you're able to actually ascertain exact numbers, especially right now with the fuel, you know, bouncing around right. in terms of, you know. So there, there is that as well. Because here's the problem, right? Um, MPGE uh, basically takes a number and... and um, guesses at how much you're paying to charge it and that, that, that the charge it varies so greatly it, de- it does depending on state depending on town depending on, on time, time of day yeah. depending on if it's public charging if it's at your house mm-hmm. you know i mean i mean it could cost you easily if you go to electrify america uh that hummer ev battery if it's empty which is over two i think it's 230 m uh kilowatt hour battery uh, that that could cost you as much as a full gas tank to fill up. Yeah, easily it, it could. Um, but do you, real quick side note: Do you know how much it cost me to charge up my kid's electric Oop. vehicle? How much? Uh, at my sister's house. Yeah, how much? Zero, because she has solar panels, and we actually That's came up. Thing, yeah. yeah. And uh, the state actually paid her a little bit uh, the last time she had an electrical bill. So it, it really does depend on those things. So you can't do MPGE and really have it, you know, for everybody. I charge my kid's car at my house uh, at uh, the lowest hours, which are usually between, say, um, 2 a.m. You know, to, yeah, to, to 6 yeah, yeah, through yeah, 2 a.m. Yeah. or whatever. And that's perfect because nothing else is really running. And... It doesn't cost me much at all to keep that car charged. So it doesn't really count in my mind. It's not concrete. But you have I like say. a massive TV you're watching? Do you have one of those? Like- yeah, I do. <laughs> I, but I don't watch it at, at, you know, between those hours or else my wife would hurt me. Um, no, I, but the point is, is that um, it depends popcorn on the house. Maker? You're making popcorn when you're watching? Uh, no, we use, we, we, we have an air, air thing for popcorn. So we're, we're, we're hip. See? See, yeah. so you got, you got the TV running, you got the popcorn maker. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, and, and then there's, there's all the irony of like, well, what if power goes out? You're absolutely right. And that's why I say solar panels and then you're okay. So, I, I think we're good to put those aside. You, let's put, so we're going to put electric vehicles aside, so, so let, really. Let, let me give you some, like, I think real-world tips here, hopefully. Uh, on If you want a, a, a truck that's going to get better fuel economy, that it's actually doable. Do you remember uh, a couple of years ago when we had that little uh, base uh, Nissan? That Frontier? Yeah, that, that was a great little truck. Yeah, so we had, we had, like, it was a little work truck Frontier. And you yeah. can get them in, I think, rear-wheel drive. Back then, yeah. Back then. And I think, realistically, we were zipping around town. And they're the ones you'll see, like, at, uh, often you'll see them at, Part like, stores. Yeah, like. Advanced Auto or something, mm-hmm. right? Apple. They're white, yeah. You can get, like, 24, 25 we were getting on that thing. Just It was a manual transmission. Yep, yep. rear right? drive. Yeah. It was the four-cylinder. So so once upon a time, manuals were more fuel-efficient than automatics. Right. And that was that generation of Frontier. 
I say generation or frontier. Let's face it, it's the, it's the same generation except for the new one for the last 15 years. Yeah, yeah, but, no, but, it, it but sat look, in the same. But look either. for that little work truck that doesn't have all the bells and whistles because it's lighter. Uh, you know, if you can get the two-wheel drive one, you're probably looking at mid-20s uh, uh, if you want a fuel-efficient truck and you need a truck. And that's about as good as it's going to get yeah. realistically in the mid size truck segment. Right, but you're talking used trucks now because yeah, um, sure. there's almost nothing out there that fits that – uh, that's available. What, all, what do those little like mini trucks get? Those old like all those little ones like the yeah, uh, yeah like the like the Zoos, Chevy Love. The Chevy oh well Chevy Love is going way back. There was a diesel version of the Chevy Love. Oh, that could that, be horrible. It was terrible because <laughs> yeah. it wasn't turbo diesel. It was it was yeah. I, I drove one of those. Um, living at a wrecking yard, you do drive these things. Um, no, they. Uh, I drove a little uh, Isuzu uh, Pup, uh, a little pickup, and that thing was getting probably in the high twenties. Really? Yeah, and I drove an LA traffic in that thing for a while. And it just got great mileage, but it doesn't weigh anything. There's no safety in it at all. Airbag is your face, and <laughs> crumple zones. Yeah, your legs are gone. So, right, so that that's a, a hospital bill will certainly outweigh yeah, the cost. Yeah, they're of still deal. out there. If I mean, I you go out there, and there's still people who will resuscitate those little trucks and keep them going. They're just very solid and simple. And Toyota had them, Nissan had them. Mazda had them, a whole bunch of, you know, basically old Japanese little pickup trucks got amazing gas mileage. And with the exception of the Mazda rotary pickup, that got horrible mileage, but it was oh, really cool. That, yeah. yeah, I remember that. I wonder how, like, Andre had that old Mazda, which is an old Ranger. I wonder how, how that's doing. Uh, yeah. His dad bought it yeah, from him. Yeah, I know. I wonder what kind of fuel economy. We never checked on those. Yes, we did do did the we? fuel economy, but he also leaked fuel all over the state of Colorado. <laughs> yeah, but went out the, so out we, out I don't know the, if we can fully count that because yeah, it half was half in the fueler neck that actually the, the fuel was coming out of. It had a rust mark on it. Half, half it didn't go into the gas engine. <laughs> it's just it. But no, I, he did okay. I remember on the fuel mileage, uh, we did that uh, long-distance fuel mileage thing from here to... Or, or, no, we were, uh, well, yeah, the city. Um, what are we, where are we Uray. going? Ure. Yeah, that was it. Um, so we, I, I won because I was in the Blazer, and that got incredible. My manager like 25. He came in second with like 22. Which isn't bad. No, it's not bad first at all. Gen, first gen Ranger yeah. basically. Five speed, and he basically left it in fifth gear the entire time. And, and it was leaking. <laughs> it was leaking a little <laughs> yeah. bit, so he lost a little bit of fuel there. And then Tommy's in, in the Jeep got horrible mileage. I know that for a fact. Because you're driving it. Because I'm driving it. It gets terrible mileage, but it's a great car. And that's a great segue because let's move on to the full-size trucks. Or yes. Tons, right? Uh, and the reason that that Jeep is so terrible is because it's got a V8, right? And it, 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 the 4.7 with that five-speed automatic four-ish, it, it, it just doesn't, it's not built for efficiency. So I was watching your video that you did with Andre. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, if you want to see the video, go to tfl-studios.com and you'll see it. Uh, and the one thing I immediately noticed uh, was that... Uh, all the worst performing trucks were the big old V8s. Yep. So the light, lightning, the 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 F one fifty with the Coyote, eh. yeah, the uh, uh, Silverado with the five point three, eh. and the six speed, and, and the six, six speed, speed because the five point three does all right with the uh, ten speed. And and let's just cut to the chase. The worst one, uh, if I remember right, um, and maybe you can share the MPG yep. was the previous generation Tundra with the big V eight. Right, and that got. Uh, 14 miles per gallon, Ooh, and, which is terrible. And um, but bear in mind that the, the reason we included that is because there's still a couple of those on dealership lots. That's the only reason why we included it, and also because the number was eye watering. And we had people. Some people say, "Yeah, I love my Toyota, but yeah, it gets terrible mileage." And other people saying, "Oh, are you kidding me? I get 38 miles per gallon or something like that." And then they're full of it. Um, we've driven several of those, and they're great, but. They are terribly inefficient. They're not aerodynamic, and they are not built for efficiency, which is why Toyota replaced them with an all-new twin-turbocharged V8 with the all the bells and whistles and the hybrid and all that stuff. So if you do have a Toyota Tundra with that big V8, you will not be considered efficient, and you will have to pay at the pump. That's the bottom line. It's one of the most inefficient trucks out there. So so can I do my Roman's rant now? Oh, by all means. All right, I'll do my rant. So uh, our friend Tim over at uh, Pickup Truck SUV yeah, Tim. Right, bought a, a Tundra, uh, and he's done a bunch of videos, uh, and every one of them, well, almost every one of them, is very negative. So well, he, basically, he had a hard time with it. Yeah. Basically, he doesn't like the infotainment. He had a wind uh, seal 
around the window that was making noise. Uh -huh. uh, and, uh, you know, there were some issues with the turbos. I think it turned out, nobody really knows, but it turns out that was probably a Tempest in a teapot where there was like maybe a couple trucks in one day of production, so not a lot had those issues. A wastegate issue. I yeah, and, and yeah. somehow I've been like reading the reviews and seeing the videos, and this, this, this narrative has taken hold that somehow the Tundra is not reliable, uh, it's not good, it's ugly. And, and I got to tell you, we've probably put on... Some of the highest miles since we've had it, right? I mean, we've now we've got seven thousand. We've towed from California. We've towed from Phoenix. Mm -hmm. uh, we have put seven thousand miles on that truck. It has not put a foot wrong. Uh, it has been completely reliable. What you'd expect from Toyota. It has done everything that we've asked of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, 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 we, we're, I don't want to wreck it, but we're putting out a fuel economy towing number as well out there. That Andre just drove it. Uh, to Phoenix from here, which is a thousand miles, pulling that old F one hundred as part of a video series. So, so I don't understand this narrative, Nathan. It's why, I, well, it's it's a really solid, good truck. Yeah, okay. Uh, part of my rant. Did they did they take it above the Ford or the Ram? No, probably didn't. not. No, but 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 it's certainly at that same level now. I agree. We I, went, it's more competitive than it used to be. Yeah, we went from a truck that got fourteen MPG that was you know. You know, pretty ancient in terms of truck terms to a truck that has a twin turbo and now coming soon a hybrid, a hybrid version. Mm -hmm. And unlike all the other manufacturers, they're actually managing to build them. The last number I read is that they've already built like thirty thousand of them, which is incredible. Yeah, Toyota's managed to. to I mean, they still got hit, but not as bad as the, a lot of the other and, ones. And then there's, you know, every every time we do a video, it's like, oh, that's a, one of those Mexican trucks, right? This thing's built in San Antonio. Right. Yeah. I, well. Okay. So. So. Right. I, I don't understand the hate for the tundra. Yeah. I, 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 well, I think there's two things. For yeah. one thing, Tim um, and Tim did have every reason to be upset about certain things that weren't working very well with his truck. To be fair. Hey, Tim. Yeah. Uh, let, let me invite you to come on down here. <laughs> let me. Let me. I'd. Lo I'd love to have this conversation with you because I. I feel like it's one-sided. Nathan's mm. going to now. He's great at that. He's going to. He's going to try to uphold your end of it. But please, uh, I'd love to invite you. Come on down. I don't want to do it over Zoom. We like to have face to face. Yeah, come on down. Come you, on down. We're next, not that far. No, next you're in Nebraska. You're not that far. Next time you're doing a program, maybe on the way back, come on down. We'll work around your schedule. Uh, me and Nathan will have you, and let's have that conversation because we both have tundras, and we. It's like it's like it's like two I, different I, experiences. Yeah, it's like he's got a completely different tundra see, than the that's one that's of, sitting there. But that's part of what we do. Yeah. If you think about the fact that you know, if if people want to read just the basic narrative on a truck and what it is on paper, they can do that. But you have to look at individual experiences. Experiences. Our experiences have been pretty positive. I'm not thrilled with that truck, by the way, uh, because it's the tow hooks. I know, guys, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I got to put this to bed. Tow hooks are really my biggest issue with the truck. And frankly speaking, I thought that Toyota would, would actually overstep everybody else because they usually do. You know what I mean? They come yeah, you, were, you were thinking they were going to like move the bar. Yeah, I thought that they, this not, truck... Not, not reach the bar. Right. They reached the bar and they built a very competitive truck. I'm still thrilled with the way it tows, uh, especially the low RPM towing is just it blows me away. And it's a great truck, but... I can see where Tim's coming from too. So there are two sides to this. So Tim, once again, you know you hear you heard it here first. I'm sure you occasionally listen, and if you do, contact Roman because yeah, you, you, you can contact me, and I'll forget, and then I'll be like, oh, let's go play golf, bro, and whatever, and uh, yeah. So talk I'll, to Roman I'll, if you want to play golf. Come on now, bring your clubs. I'll go play golf. I haven't yeah. played golf in like ten years. You'll kill my ass, but I'd love to play golf. There you go. So then you have a reason to do this, and then on social media, put in Roman's face as he's losing. Because I'm not going to play. I'll just sit there and, and you drink. know what? You could be the moderator. How about that? We'll get Tim with in golf. Here. Yes. No, not with golf. <laughs> you, could, you could moderate that conversation. You're yeah. the reasonable one. I'll be like, hey, it's a great truck, and he can be like, no, it's got these issues. And we yeah. Can, and then you guys, uh, and I don't mean Tim now. I mean the audience can decide which which of those you know stories is the one that resonates with them. I think I will say this. It though. could it could be two different trucks. I mean, we got we got lucky. But we got it. He must first he got his year. Like a week after we got ours. But I got to say this: first year of any brand new vehicle, yeah. there are teething issues and that goes across the board and usually by the second year they have a lot of those issues figured out and it could be little things it could be technical issues also remember their supply line issues that they were having too so it's any number of things so when tim comes and you will um we'll talk about this and yeah yeah and uh, we'll have a nice conversation about it so let's let's continue it's from like, there because to me like i said it's like we've got two different completely but different that's the thing tracks. two different experiences and and but that helps the consumer because then they see the positive and the negative I yeah i know but there's two different things to look at so okay all right let's, so let's continue so, so mid-size trucks so we did oh, we we're, we're actually up to full-size trucks now. oh full-size trucks yeah yeah, yeah. full-size trucks so we did talk about uh the 
worst, right, which are all the V8s. Yeah. So, so now let's talk about the most fuel efficient ones. Now, this is a surprising thing for some people, but diesels are actually really, really efficient. In yeah, I read through comments on that video, and everybody's like, yeah, but diesel's much more expensive than gas. So yeah. while you get better fuel economy, it's immediately yeah, offset but, by higher. Yeah. But it's not by that much, right? It's, okay. it's, well, I don't know when we air this, but as of the typing of this, it's like a dollar now. A, a dollar more than uh, than unleaded, yeah. the super unleaded. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Okay, and it's going the other way. Okay, so with that being said, lot. if you look at the economy that we've been getting, not only with towing but just regular economy with GM pickups and their straight six diesels, and just a hair under that, the Ram V6 diesel, which is in their fifteen hundred, the num the numbers, pardon me, are absolutely outstanding. So, so, so here's where I would agree with the diesel. If you're going to be doing a lot of towing, uh -huh. uh, night and day. Yes. Just night and day, right? Yeah, driving, uh, but, or long distance driving. Or long distance, just dri but driving around town, kind of commuting. Mm -hmm. the, the, the cost of the diesel and the cost of maintenance is going to, because they're always going to cost more. Well, there's, there's good news to that. Yeah. Um, GM no, saw this coming, and they actually did something smart, which is they went and lowered the price of their diesel trucks, which is far less than both Ram and formerly Ford offered to go to their diesels. So it's it's like I think twelve hundred bucks to get the diesel, which is a positive. Granted, twelve hundred more, twelve hundred over, yeah. over over what you over would what pay, you yeah. would pay for the same like five point three five point three I believe. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, you know there are other things. GM also has a six point two liter V eight, which is an awesome V eight, but it only likes premium, mm. which yeah. sucks. Yeah. And let's let's actually talk about that. Yeah. Uh, we, maybe should we get an expert in here? But I'll, I'll give you my best crack at it. Having, Hit it. Having people are now emailing us. Is it okay if I use if, if you know if it's recommended that I use premium? Is it okay if I don't? And I think I think that there is a difference between recommended mm -hmm. uh, and like like you should use. So like or required or required. Yeah. yeah. So what, what what used to happen back in the days of carburetor is when you used lower octane gas, you would get knock, right? And then that would be very bad. Fuel, fuel injection too? Yeah, fuel injection, that would be bad. But today, the vehicles, trucks, cars have computers and they retard the, the spark mm -hmm. so that if you have lower octane fuel, basically what happens is you get a little bit less horsepower, but you don't get knock and you're not doing any damage to your engine. I can give you a good example to yeah. that too. All right. yeah. uh, Nissan, uh, they have a beautiful 5.6 liter V8, we love it. And they recommend uh, high octane, so you can get maximum horsepower, which is 400, right? But if you don't, then you get something like 370 or whatever. Um, and I've driven the truck with low grade fuel before because remember, I had it for a little while and drove it back and forth, and you know, I'm cheap. So I drove it around and I didn't notice any real difference with it driving. What I did notice was that my um, economy dropped a little bit. Your economy could drop. Too. Right, so that can be part of it. And you know what's worse? E85, E85. Yeah, holy oh moly, E85. Five. Has so, got so much less caloric, when I say caloric, I mean just like punch per gallon. Right. Right, in terms of how much uh, energy it has and how far it could take you down the road. Right, so if you're desperate, you can get much cheaper E85. However, we actually have... You'll get, you'll get much less distance 11, on that same one of our Yeah, one of our, uh, it was the 5.3 liter running on E85 with the six-speed auto. And it's basically, those are essentially like, um, you know, not trucks that you would buy every day. They're, they're work trucks. But still, 11 miles per gallon combined. Now, that same truck was getting like 15 miles per gallon combined with using regular fuel. So you have to really balance out. What is that? You know, is is am I saving money? No, you, I, I don't know if you really are. Um, yeah, there's no such thing as a free lunch. No, there's there's just not. There's, there's not. Yeah, there's a reason it's cheaper. So I would say, like in the TRX, I think it's required. So 91. Is yes, required. it is. It, it, it'll actually chew your arm off and then eat that. <laughs> Spit so it out. Get, it, it'll get more <laughs> octane out of your arm, and it's just it won't be happy. So so if it's required, yeah, you better put it in because you're probably then running all kinds of issues with like warranty. Well, and, exactly. You yeah. could void your warranty in some of these. And they can tell. They can tell if that vehicle has had some bad gas, as they like to put it. And if it says required, then you're going to have to bite the bullet and do it. However, if it's recommended, in many cases, you will lose a little bit of performance. You may lose some um, you know, economy, but you may save a few bucks. And so you have to balance that out. Here's a good example. 
that Jeep that I'm driving. And I love this Jeep, by the way. It really likes high octane. It, it likes 91. I put in uh, 85, which we have here at high elevation, 85. This, yeah, this is a uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee with 200,000 miles. So 240-something. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a quarter of a million miles. At that point, put put in twigs and grass. Yeah, you can. <laughs> However, I, I so I put in low octane, and it would diesel a little bit, meaning that when you shut it off, it'll go ding, 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 a little bit. And then I noticed that it just didn't like getting up to speed as much. So I started putting high octane back in there, and it just drove great. It was happy and swilled that gas. It's such a pig. It's worse than me. So, yes, it's... It, it does make a difference. And older vehicles, you can feel it, I think, more acutely. Um, newer sure. vehicles, as long as it's recommended as opposed to required, you can get away with it. And I think you won't notice it as much. Yeah, you probably won't notice it. I think you'll be okay. So uh, you don't have to give it the good stuff. The, yeah. Go ahead. The, the Read other, your driver's manual. Read your driver's manual. Or, Make sure. It, or it actually says on the door, on the flap. It'll, it does. It'll say, yeah. But on your manual, if it says, warning, you will avoid your warranty. If you put in low octane fuel, then you might want to pay attention to that. Um, <laughs> don't put diesel in a gas car. Uh, no, I actually know somebody who did that. We should say that, yeah. and don't put the gas in a diesel car. Yeah, that's a really bad idea, too. Those are really bad ideas. Uh, and then maybe the other thing we can talk about is, like, uh, um, all these harebrained gas saving. We'll do some testing. I think it's high time we did some testing. I, I think we should do some <laughs> device because there's some devices out there. There were a few back in the day, you, not too long you ago. You know they're going to pop up like mushrooms after oh the rain my right God. now. <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah, the vortex generators. The vortex generators. <laughs> Here, put these little louvers on your hood. You'll get better mileage. No, I'm it, talking about vortex generators. Yeah, inside the yeah the air intake. Yeah, yeah. There were a couple different types of those too. There were spacers, and some people swear to God that spacers work. And there were the vortex generators. Didn't we do a video. Wasn't there like one where you take a magnet and put it on your fuel line, and it's supposed to somehow align oh, the, yeah. the ionizing. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and there's another one where I of, of the fuel and then, you know, aligns everything so that it, you know, burns it re- less. Yeah, and it removes par- particulates so it's a, a cleaner burn. Um, and there was another I one a lot of that stuff where like that. you plug it into your lighter and it's <laughs> yes, a, a, like an LED that pulses. And yeah. if it pulses correctly, then you're driving correctly or something. It turns out it's just... An oh, LED. There's oh, nothing in it. All, all that stuff is coming back. Yeah, yeah most yeah. of that oh, stuff. Oh, it optimizes your electrical system. Oh, optimizes. That's right. You yeah, plug it into, yeah. <laughs> and it makes your electrical system work Which better. Which kind of makes sense, right? Spark, spark plug. Sure, yeah. sure. The, well, the amount that your uh, alternator is turning out throughout your vehicle and how much it draws. I so, mean, so actually, that does remind me. There are ways. Our like our friends at Five Star, right? They, mm-hmm. they do tunes. Yes, they do. Uh, and oftentimes, when you get a tune, especially a, like a Stage One tune on your vehicle, mm-hmm. uh, you can tune it for more. Uh, power, or you can tune it for more fuel efficiency. So those right. do work. So if you have a tune on your vehicle, you can go in and then you can you could say, hey, let's 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 get rid of the you know the overboost feature on the turbo. Uh, you know, let's get rid of you know the fuel injection squirting more gas in there, and let's turn it down and go the other way, which is possible, possible. But, but which does work. It does in many cases. However, once again, you make sure if you do have a warranty and you want to keep it. Make sure that it's kosher or else you might be in trouble. But I think trouble. if you tuned your vehicle with a warranty, you're, 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 you're way beyond that. Yeah, no, if, you're tuning, if you're doing a flash tune or something, then you might, uh, you're might you already done with your warranty, right? And, and, and here's the thing about like flash tunes, right? All those tuners. Um, so first of all, you gotta, the tuner has to crack the code, which people do, right? Mm-hmm. So they, they can crack the code. Uh, but uh, it always now leaves like uh, uh, some kind of a, a footprint in the code where when you tune it and then you untune it, the dealer can go and see that this, you know, they, they can't tell what's been done to it, but they can tell that the, the, the software has been altered. Something was plugged into like the OBD2 or and then something did something. Or it was rewritten, mm-hmm. right? Because that's what really happens. You overwrite it and then you have to rewrite it. Uh, and then there's a marker that the yeah, dealer can that, read. And that, that is why you really need to make sure that you're not in love with your warranty if you're going to tune your vehicle. Yeah, and I'm just saying, do you really, you know, now do you really want to have that fight with the dealer at this point in time? Uh, I, I really don't. They're not selling a lot of cars right now. They're probably going to be up for a good <laughs> conversation. Tell you what, we'll sell you a tune with it too. What can I do to get you out of a car today? Um, yeah, I know. They're, uh, so, um, so what's the most fuel-efficient full-size truck, dude? If you want to get something that's got... A Rivian? <laughs> yeah, and I know it's kind of it's in between lightning. Um, yeah, the Ford Lightning probably will be. What's we don't we don't have EPA numbers on that yeah. yet. Um, so as far as like we could tell, the, uh, probably the Ford Hybrid F one hundred and fifty Hybrid, the one Andre has. No, no, but it's close. Okay, yeah, that one's close. Um, one of the most efficient vehicles out there is uh, it's a mix. So it's either the Ram fifteen hundred with e torque. 
No, game? no, no, no. It's um, it's with their Eco V6 diesel. Oh. And they have a special version of that, which is their high fuel mileage. I think it's an FHFE, I think. And it has shutters, and it's rear drive, and it has a tonneau cover, and it gives. We've had one before, remember? I remember. So, so I've told the story before, but we had that the previous generation. Remember yeah, the Wayne? previous one. Yeah. And Wayne brought it from California, uh-huh. and uh, he, he brought it for us from LA, and it's a thousand miles from here to LA. Uh, and I'm like, when when he showed up at our old offices, I'm like, Wayne, how much fuel is in this thing, and do I have to go fuel it up? And he said, Yeah, you better go fuel it up because I didn't fuel it up. So he went a thousand, thousand miles, miles on a on tank. tank full. Now, Wayne, explain who Wayne He's, is. Wayne, Wayne is a hypermiler. He kind of invented or refined or defined the hypermiling, uh, and he will not use a brake, Nathan. I know. He will not use a brake. He, it's a little scary. He's an awesome guy, by the way, and but he, and he really thinks these things Wayne, through Wayne how Curtis, to get. Yeah, yeah I Curtis. think what's his what's his YouTube channel? I can't remember off the top oh, of my head. I'm sorry, it's, Wayne. I can't think. Sorry, of Wayne. Wayne. I, 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 w- I don't want to say the wrong one. It's not, yeah, I don't want to say the wrong one. Because it's not, it's not Jalopnik. I know that. It's not that. It's not Motor Trend. <laughs> yeah, it's not Jalopnik. Sorry. But, but check out Wayne. You, you can find him pretty easily. And he's, he's actually worked with um, you know, Hollywood elites, including uh, Mike from uh, Dealer, yeah, he's Willie with, Dealer. Yeah, he's worked um, with a lot of people. Yeah, so and, he, and manufacturers, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he, so he really knows anyway, stuff. So anyway, he, he got 1,000 thousand miles. So what's, what's the current one got? But uh, it's, it's not quite as good, yeah. uh, but it's, it's around 30 miles per gallon on the highway. Wow, but diesel. I mean, diesel, yeah. right? But V6 diesel, and then the Chevy um, Silverado with the straight six is really close as well. So the the mileage is very very close between the two of those. Now think about that. You're talking about a half ton truck, and these are by the way with uh, these are quad cab, you know, extra cabs. I should right. say. Yeah, yeah. Um, big, big trucks. So they hold. can hold five people if you want them to, or in some cases six, and they could hold stuff in the back, like over a thousand pounds, and they can pull. At least five thousand pounds and up to like seven or eight thousand pounds, and they're getting thirty miles per gallon on the highway. Now I know diesel's expensive, and I know that maintaining the diesel is expensive. But just the idea of being able to go really, really far and not have to worry about fueling up, and then on top of that, having thirty miles per gallon on the highway when you're not laden—that's really impressive stuff. Yeah. Now some people out there may be thinking, obviously, it's all about aerodynamics. So what if I? You know, take some duct tape. Oh, sure. Uh, and cover up. Well, I think manufacturers have thought of that now. Well, that's so, why shutters and all that right, are so, so now, popular. Back in the day, when, if we had done this 10 years ago, we would have been like, yeah, you could probably tape up, you know, certain parts of your Close your mirrors, and who cares about mirrors, right? <laughs> yeah. I think it's illegal, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but, but now, most of the modern trucks actually have those arrow aids built into <clears> them. We know that because we broke one on the ram, unfortunately. <laughs> yes, we, <laughs> we did. One. Popped yeah, off that. Yeah. that <laughs> and basically, they're like little shutters that come down when you're in highway. To, to or, or in the grill, they'll actually yeah, close to create as well. better airflow around mm-hmm. or under the truck. Now, there is one thing, Nathan, you could do that will increase your fuel economy by one MPG. Uh, and, and if you, most trucks now, new trucks have this, and I'm going to give you a hint most uh, truck guys and gals hate it. Start, stop. Exactly. Yeah. But if, if don't deactivate, start, stop, and actually use that, the reason the manufacturers put that on is because they're fighting for like, Tenths of an MPG, yeah. and that thing will get you like one MPG up to up to one but MPG. Yeah, yeah it, it depends on the truck, of course. At <laughs> the time of year, right? Yeah, if you're running like in the winter or summer. But w- what a lot of people are doing is they're changing around. Instead of having a conventional starter, they have different types of systems that can refire your engine that are more efficient. So it's not like shutting your car off and then turning your car or truck back on, which can actually suck up a lot of fuel in itself. These things, I mean, it's a completely different setup. Um, Honestly, so would, some I, systems are better than others, too. So, so I would say this would be a good time to remove that defeat device that you bought and stuck on because you hate stop start. Look, most of us hate it, too, right? Yeah. It's weird. It's kind of annoying. And it's a pause at the light that usually takes a little bit longer. Yeah, the engine, sometimes the engine can, like, like jolt the whole truck, right, when right. it stops. If it's done right, you, it's pretty transparent, but sometimes it isn't. So if you've, if you've added that defeat, defeat device... Uh, that that's something you might want to think about removing. There's the other thing that, that that's kind of new in, in the tuna world right now. I know Banks does this, and that is basically you can change uh, the throttle mapping of your accelerator pedal, right? right? So you you can change the way that that. Uh, increases or decreases fuel flow to the engine and you can change the graph of that so like if, the, if you have this very aggressive tip in 
or not aggressive, you can make it more aggressive. And usually that's done to enhance performance so that you get more uh, power, power quickly. Perform- quickly. Yep. But you could also do it the other way. Sure. Right? You could also make it so you floor the pedal and nothing happens for a long time and you slowly leave the stop. Which is what you want. I right mean, now, yeah. In an ideal world, if you could, you'd take off at second gear at every light. Also, a lot of trucks have econ modes or eco modes and whatnot. And if you leave that in the eco mode, if you leave the start stop system on, and if you do not molest the uh, cylinder deactivation system, which a lot of you guys do. A lot of people hate those, but now, you know. They work. They, they work. You know, yeah, when you're running down the highway and you have an eight-cylinder that's suddenly running on four cylinders, you're sucking up less fuel. I, I know it doesn't work with towing very often, but it's still something that can really save you a lot of fuel. So the, other, a, the other way you could save fuel is, especially when we'll get to heavy-duty trucks in a second, uh, uh, keep your truck in two-wheel drive. Yeah. Yeah. So some of the auto systems, the way they work is you put an auto, and, it, and it's basically uh, – two-wheel drive, and when the rear wheel starts slipping, then it sends power to the front wheels. Right. But a lot of heavy-duty trucks don't have auto. And even if you do have auto, uh, let's say you, you want to you know, inch out every bit of fuel economy, keep it in two-wheel drive unless you really, really need four-wheel drive because the more rolling resistance, right, the, the more wheels you have to turn, the worse the fuel economy is. And we've found, and it's usually the case, that most uh, of the economical trucks out there are two-wheel drive trucks and because they don't have all the uh, well, extra weight. load, weight, and also drag because a lot of parasitic drag from four-wheel drive systems can also uh, you know cause issues with uh, fuel mileage I, so I, I would say get rid of your truck nuts Okay, oh yeah, clean up, clean take up, the heavy truck nuts <laughs> off the back of the truck, remove those. But I know, also, I know when I, you know when I'm racing, <laughs> that you'll pull off the truck nuts so you can go. No, a little I'm talking bit about fast. me. Personally. Oh, well, you yeah, per- okay, gotcha. 10k. I like to have the boys tucked in. I ah, gotcha, gotcha. You know, you, you don't want that aerodynamic flow to be disrupted on a truck or between your legs. I cannot get that image out of my head, and I really want to. So thank you, Roman. Uh, and by, by the way, I think truck nuts are done now. I, I, we're done with truck nuts. No, that was like a moment in time. No, no, there's no, not there. No, but I'm saying if you. You have a move on. So remember when we were young, like the thing that all truckers had was that Yosemite Sam with with yeah. the, with the two six shooters, right? Yeah. And right. then 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 it turned into Calvin pissing. Remember that like little yeah. Calvin and Hobbs. Still still around a little but, but bit. But all that stuff, it, it has its time, and then you know it's fashionable for a while. Yeah. And then if you don't understand when that moment in time is gone, then you just start looking old and stupid. Right, so truck nuts are past. That was like four years ago. Okay. There'll be something else, but it's not truck nuts anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Roman's second rant on this podcast. Uh, just well, to say, you, so, you know, to buckle up. You think I'm wrong? You think they're still happening? I think that truck nuts are still popular in certain areas with certain types of people who enjoy throwing them out there, and they really enjoy taking off people who don't like them. Like how about how feel. about how about like those uh, Ben Hur? Uh, 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 not the, well, Where they're also we? truck nuts, but the, the Ben Hur is a movie, by the way, from way back in time when Roman so was I, in high school. So Ben Hur had. Uh uh, the scene in the chariots? Coliseum where they had the Coliseums racing, right? Yeah, the, the chariots. Reason, yeah, racing. and then because, of course, uh, it ha- he, he won the race, or, or he didn't have the, the thing that came out of the chariot wheel and, like, cut Oh, yeah, yeah, the big blade that yeah. comes out of the side of the and wheel. So, so a lot of truck guys now and gals have put, like, either bullets or very pointy uh, things uh, on the top of their lug nut, nuts, lug yeah. nuts, right? So... Does that, that probably hurts your fuel economy too if you've got these big like pointing Ben Hur chariot like sticky things. Usually, and I'm just I, I, I hate to compartmentalize this, but usually the people who are doing that are the same people who have, you know, 26 inch rims that also are about uh, two feet wide and they have very thin rubber on them, all of which are not very aerodynamic. Yeah, or uh, good for a road drive. And, and you know, while we're at the wheel, yeah. you know, wider tires are worse than narrow tires. Yeah, yeah. You want rolling low resistance. rolling resistance tires. Which, um, for those of you who are watching this, if you can see the vehicle I have up here, which is the GMC uh, Canyon AT4, which by the way we loved, um, those tires are not efficient. If you were going to get a, a Canyon. If you get the other versions of it, the tires will not be as beefy, and as such, they will return slightly better results at the fuel pump. And then let's jump to the heavy-duty trucks now. Yes, now heavy-duty trucks are a bit of a funny thing. They're not rated, but you made this point, and I would stress it again, Mm -hmm. uh, especially out of all the trucks, heavy-duty trucks roll on very high tire pressures. Yes, extremely high. Like 65 to 75 PSI. Uh, And that is definitely a truck where you want to make sure that just – for fuel economy, but also for safety's sake, that, that you are, uh, and it's easy to go from 75 or whatever, you know, the manufacturer suggested number is to like mm-hmm. 60 
and or it's not 50. That, or 50, and you still you know have a lot of air and not notice a difference. Right. But it's going to give you a huge improvement in fuel economy and safety. Right. Uh, because they're meant to roll very high pressures. They are, and that has to do with load as well. Exactly, and that, yeah, and because all they carry that. heavy loads. Exactly. Um, and fortunately, most of these trucks come standard with, uh, in fact, they all do, with some form of TPM system where you can look nowadays. at your... Uh, yeah, nowadays they do. And tire, knowing your tire pressure is huge if you're going to be someone who's doing commercial stuff. And here's the other thing, right? If you've, let's say you lifted your truck and you've gone the bro dozer route. Yeah. uh, Most people, I think, I'm guessing at this, but I think that's a fair guess, will not spend the extra money on TPMS sensors, right? (laughs) It's much cheaper to put a little piece of tape across that little light in your dashboard. Yes. Okay. Than it is to buy, because they're like a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks per Yeah, they can can be up to that easily. Um, And installed, you're looking at $500. So, you know, your choice is when you replace your wheels to either take the TPMS sensors out of the old wheels, which is also not ideal, or buy new ones. And let's face it, most people probably don't spend that extra 500. So, So you're rolling around out there with no... No active way of knowing Maybe about it. I would go, yeah. if it were me, I'd go and check my tire pressure. How long can it take? 20 seconds, get a little gauge, check your tire pressure. If you have a dually, it might take a little bit longer. But the point is, is that um, yeah, you're, you're right, they, and they really should check their tire pressure often. Um, so heavy-duty trucks are kind of a weird batch because there's, there's really two that we covered in the video that we did on truck, which is the 2500s with gas engines and then the 3500s with diesel engines towing. And the reason we covered towing is because yeah, we've done some dry runs with these things, and we've gotten an approximate number on what they can do MPG-wise, and we have videos out there on that. But with the towing, with the heavy-duty 3500s, we were towing 30,000 pounds. And we were getting mileage like 14, 14 MPG. Now, this is, granted, mo- highway driving, but it's towing 30,000 pounds. Which is incredible. That's an incredible number. This is number. where diesels come into their own. Absolutely. That just blows me away how efficient they are for what you're doing. So that new Ram we just bought, the 2500? Yeah, it's a beast. Right? Uh, so uh, driving around town, we're probably getting like between 17 and 19. Which is better than my Jeep. Which is better than your Jeep, <laughs> yes. Pisses me and then we were just towing for the new series we're doing. And by the way, we're doing a new series called Taming Tumbleweed. Yeah. The first episode is going to be up on TFL Off-Road, so please check it out. It's a lot of fun. We towed a skid steer with it, which was uh, 7,000 pounds, and the trailer was like 5, so we're like 12 or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, 15, David got towing. <laughs> Fifteen towing, towing like twelve thousand pounds. It's just insane. He was he was kind of hypermiling it, but nevertheless, it's you know uh, that same uh, Tundra towing that F one hundred. I don't know. I didn't we do that our, video yet? Oh yeah, our Tundra, but towing that F one hundred down in Arizona. I bet you it's uh, single digits easily. Single digits, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and one of the major things. I mean, diesels burn very differently. They work very differently than your regular internal combustion gas engine. And the big example for that is the fact that we also cover 2,500 trucks and all of them with their big V8. So the 6.4, the 6.6, and the 7.3 Godzilla. And all of those under load were nowhere near as efficient as their diesel brethren. However, they're a lot more inexpensive to buy. Yeah, uh, the, the Cummins was a 10K. It's figure 10K more. Yeah, yeah. It's which, a round number. It's maybe nine, but it's that's how much more you're going to pay for it. Right. So the thing is, is that if you get the 6.4, you can still tow a lot, not not as much, but you know, but the question is, yeah, you're saving a lot of money, but do you end up spending that money? And in today's world, you might. Hey, actually, that's another good tip. Uh, take those Dumbo ears and put them down. If you're going to have a oh, truck yeah, yeah. and you've got the mirrors like... Vertical as opposed to horizontal, which put right, them down or them down. or pull them in if you're not towing. Right, yeah, you know, pull because them in, many yeah, of them yeah, will yeah, telescope them. outward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. There there are a lot of little uh, tips that you can do. Also, take the load out of your bed if you don't need the load in your bed. A lot of guys will leave a ladder, a lawnmower, barrel, gas, or whatever in the bed of their Beer truck. Hands. Yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> Pretty light. Uh, truck nuts. So <laughs> you want to remove that stuff and and really eat the. Just little things like that can make a huge difference at the pump over time. So, you know, keep I, I that in mean, mind. I mean, with the heavy-duty trucks, right, if you've bought yourself a power wagon or a tremor, uh, you are not going to be getting... You, uh, yeah. you, you had to cut and hurt me, didn't you? You had to well, mention I mean, the power it's, wagon. It's kind of like our It's the most inefficient thing out there. I know. It's, it's terrible. Like, it's like the t- you know all the stuff we love right now is is off the menu. So Raptor, forget about it. With Raptor thirty seven. Rap- oh, the Raptor with the thirty sevens. Forget, forget about it. TRX, forget about it. Yeah, um, I I wonder if I have the numbers here with me. Power wagon. Yes, I do actually. I have the Raptor. Yeah. Um, the regular Ford Raptor. Four hundred fifty horsepower. Yeah, is a fourteen city, eighteen highway, fifteen combined, and then the thirty sevens. 
yeah. is 14 city, 16 highway, and still 15 combined. The bottom line is that it's not exactly fuel efficient, but if you get a Ram TRX, 12 miles per gallon combined. And that's on a good day when you have it in eco mode and you're just, you know, going maybe slightly downhill, I think. Well, so here's here's the tough part about this, right? We had a Hellcat for a while, yeah, a I Challenger. Uh, and I drove that on the highway. I took it to California, and I mm. drove it back, and I was getting 30 mpg, Nathan. 30 mpg. But that's because that engine would, like, click over at, like, maybe 2,000 RPM. Mm-hmm. In, uh, in at 75, gear, right. in eighth, you know, just, just like like a Harley, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, blah, 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 yep. right? Barely using any fuel at all. If you were to floor it, of course, that would be a dramatic difference. The problem is you really don't have that option in a truck. No, you don't. Right? Because... Because it's a much bigger vehicle, it's much more, uh, it's much more. Uh, le- I should say it's much less aero. Oh yeah, the, the, the mass alone and the heavy Way, frame yeah. so, and everything. So it doesn't like it's not like it's going to be you know seven hundred two horsepower in a Challenger on the highway. You just you know just kind of like just it's power to weight. Right. Yeah. This thing is you know big heavy. Also, fully all-wheel drive. Remember, all-wheel then it's, drive. you can't deactivate that. On big that. tire, on 35s. Yeah, and they're yeah. very wide. Right. And, yeah. yeah, and but at the same time, and I know a lot of people are going to say this in the comments, and I agree with you. If you can afford that truck, if you're a regular Joe and can afford that, then you can afford an extra uh, 30 bucks every yeah, time but, you fill it up. Yeah, but I think that's not true. Ooh. I think, okay, if you can afford a $350,000 Hummer EV, then you're probably like into serious crypto crazy money stuff, right? Or whatever, whatever the new newfangled, you know, serious. Or you own the sham wow industry, by the way, which but is I a big think, one. I think there are a lot of guys and gals out there who have stretched to a TRX, who have taken out a loan for a TRX, who, who, yeah. who, who you know, who are regular guys who just wanted, you know, to treat themselves or treat herself uh, to the coolest, bad, baddest truck out there, and they borrowed money or they really put off other things, and so to them. This is not like I, I, I've got money to burn. I've just got enough money from the, the dream truck of mine, and now I'm having to fill that thing up, and it's going to be a double swiper or a triple swiper at the pump. It might be a triple swiper, but I will say that for a lot of people who are looking, I actually put out a video, uh, and you suggested this. We had a Ram, um, uh, we had a Ram Rebel GT that I reviewed, and the Ram Rebel GT. It's not cheap, but it has the 5.7 liter in it, which is way more efficient. And it still gives you a lot of the stuff that the TRX gives you. Yeah, it's like a it's like a TRX on a budget. On a budget, exactly. It doesn't have the, the beefy engine or the beefy suspension, but it does a lot of the other stuff, and it's much more economical, and you can get one for a lot less money. That would be the choice. And for those people who are dreamers out there, yeah, they'll have to wait so, or well, pay. The, here's, here's the solution. I've got the perfect solution. Sure. I've got the perfect. Hit if it. If you want your TRX or your Raptor, mm-hmm. and you're stretching, right? Yeah. And with spring around the corner... Get yourself a Honda Monkey. <laughs> Put it in the bag. Over 100, 100 miles per gallon, right? 130 miles a gallon. 100 miles. <laughs> Can you drive those on the highway? Yeah, I would pay real money to see you driving yeah, one of those on the highway. It does like 55, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Or no. I mean, a Navi, you know, a Monkey. Oh, the Navi 4, is actually, the Navi is, I know, legal on, on, on highways. So the Navi is a little slower. Uh, it's a little bit less fuel efficient. It's still over 100. I want to say it's 110. So Navi is the cheapest Honda you can buy. What are they, 2,000, something like that? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, uh, half the price of a Monkey. Uh, and it'll go over 100 miles per gallon. So, you know, use that to commute to work or throw it in the back of your truck and then use the truck for the highway part and then, you know, take the monkey or navy down and, and it'll, you'll have fun and, and two gallons of gas will take you 200 miles. Yeah, yeah. So the lunatics over at TFL Bike, um, and I love those boys, but they're nuts because they, Alex will actually ride motorcycles in the snow. He's got problems. And these guys will just go out there and do that. And so the thing about uh, TFL Bike is that they will go and test these bikes. Actually test some mileage, too, which is impressive. But they have real issues because they drive motorcycles. All right. right, So so that would be my solution. But, like, Andre went to Costco and got that electric bike. Mm -hmm. I I forgot. It's like a three. It's the cheapest electric bike you can get. It's $350. We had it here at the office for a while. Yeah. Get yourself one of those. Yeah, actually. It's got, like, 20 miles of range. It's got a throttle. Yeah, yeah. And you just power through it. I mean, as long as you're not going through the midwinter. Yeah. Um, If you're in California, why not? Actually, I got to tell you guys, and I'm sorry to say this. My kid's electric car cost me less than nine grand, yeah. and I bought it about two years ago. 
and it costs. It's got a leaf, by the way. It's it's a old, it's 2016. A 2016 Nissan Leaf, but the bigger battery, the 30 kilowatt hour battery. So it has new about 100 miles of range right now. On a good day, it, it might put out 80, 85 miles of range. The thing is, is that for commuting, she doesn't pay very much at all, if anything. In fact, if she does charge at work when she oh, goes to work, now you're bragging. Yes, I am. But, but, but there's a point. <laughs> there's a point here. If you really, if you have this big bad truck in your garage, get a used electric car. Bang it around for just daily driving or a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. Bang it around for daily driving. Keep your vehicle stored. Once things mellow out a little bit, sell this little vehicle, and then you can drive your truck again. I, I still say deploy the monkey, Nathan. Deploy, deploy the, monkey. the monkey. You're going to hear that a lot more in the future, <laughs> by the way. They deploy the monkey. We, we, we know for a fact the monkey is going to become more popular in TFL. <laughs> well, there you have it, guys. I uh, hope these tips have, have been helpful. I would say the biggest tip right now is go check your tire pressures. Check your, check your tire yeah. pressures and lighten your load. That's yeah. Those are the, yeah. the easy, easiest easy. things you can do. Yeah. Uh, and maybe slow down and drive the speed limit or near the speed limit. You'll be surprised, actually, how get, good your get, return get can be. Get rid of that, like, uh, uh, I don't know, what, what can you get rid of? The, the, uh, the fifth wheel hitch that's in the back? Those yeah, if, you, if you carry heavy hitches and you, yeah. you're not going to be towing for a while, yeah, get rid of it. And crazy. don't put it in your bed. Actually, leave it in your garage. Yeah. I know, I know. Hey, man, I'm going to need that. I don't know when I'm going to need it. Yes, okay, true. But still, it's an excuse to get out of work, right? Oh, sorry, boss, I have to go home and get it. Wink. You know, that type of thing. No, seriously, just take the heavy stuff off your truck for now. You'll be surprised how much mileage you can save. And and then on top get of that... Get rid of your uh, start stop defeat device. Yeah, yeah let the start-stop do its job. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's... It, you'd be surprised. Just little things like that can give you a couple extra miles per gallon, and then more importantly, at the pump, you'll save a few bucks. You know, we, we, we have terrible timing with our new series, Go Big. So we're, <laughs> we're doing the God. series where we just bought an oh, excursion, excursion, a Suburban, and an Escalade. It's I've been, the V10 excursion, guys. I've, I've, been, look, I've been on Craigslist uh, just because I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for pain, yeah. look, looking at, like, what Suburbans are doing now, and they are, like, bottoming out. Of course just they are. Bo- uh, we bought ours, like, way... At the exact wrong, wrong time, time when everybody yeah. was, was taking advantage. And yeah. now they're trying to get rid of them. Yeah, everybody's trying to dump their old excursions, and, and it yeah. might be a good time to actually wait another month get a diesel excursion. I'm sure those things are going to be pretty affordable. Those, well, they, they, nah, those the, the, there's really rare now because some, yeah, they've been bought so much. But uh, stay tuned for the Go Big series. We will be doing. It'll bankrupt us. <laughs> it's going to bankrupt us. It's going um, it, to kill us because we're doing some long distance driving with these trucks well, as well and off roading. Well, and all the idea is to stuff. turn these things into like the ultimate overlanders, and we're going to go to Moab. Yeah, we, we might just be going over to. Horseshoes Reservoir, <laughs> like which is miles. just ten miles away, and if we can afford that, I had to take it home uh, the, the uh, excursion, and um, I was driving carefully on the way back. I was getting ten miles per gallon did, on the highway. Did, did you ever watch uh, Reno Nine One One? Yeah, yeah. There's that one episode which is the funniest, where they get a donation of a Hummer. I, I didn't see that. It's, episode. it's a Humvee, so they get a Humvee as, as their police vehicle. Okay. All right, and every time they get it, they run out of fuel. <laughs> it's like they try, they try to pull out of. They're like trying to pull out of their parking lot, and they're like, "Oh, ran out of fuel." <laughs> It's just this recurring joke. <laughs> Got to go fill it up again. There's a Lamborghini uh, scene where one of the guys gets nailed in the head and gets flown backwards. It's about the funniest damn thing I've ever seen. So anyway, guys, um, you know we want to hear in your comments below uh, some other fuel saving tips, realistic ones. Obviously, you know, I mean, some people can't go out there and get a six hundred, a thousand dollar tune and shove it into their car and hope to save money. So and maybe we'll do, we'll do testing on that. We've got some of those tunes. We've got a couple things, so we are going to yeah. test some of those. I think Tommy might be uh, lined up to do that. He loves that stuff. No, you know what he wants to do? Uh, he wants to do this. <laughs> I'm already like oh, having a heart attack. Yeah. No, no, no. He wants to do a video to see how much money will cost to fill up the excursion. Oh, so no. Andre, oh. Andre took it to the airport to because he's at the work truck show, right? Uh, to to empty it out, and now he's going to go to the. Uh, gas station and do like the most expensive fill up ever and it will be the most because I think that has like a 40 some gallon fuel tank I hope it, I don't think it, it, the good news is that it doesn't have to have premium fuel am I correct yeah I, well I figure he's going to need to fill it up I mean I guess Andre didn't have to go to the airport with it but he's going to have to fill it up anyway when mm. we go to Moab so, yeah yeah so it's not like but still it's going to be it's, it's going to be, be ridiculous I'm going to have expensive. to raise the limit on the credit on the company credit card you're going to have well, we should probably try to buy a gas station at this point it's <laughs> It's going to be ridiculous. Oh, man. Well, anyway, guys, so thank you for joining oh. us. Oh, there's more. Oh, there's another. There's a whole bunch of stuff you could do, but really you shouldn't. Okay. So, so, the, so like, you know, you know, we have this ranch now. Yeah. You know, there's a different color of diesel you could buy that's for farming. Yeah. So if you have, if you have a ranch <laughs> or a farm truck, 
It, and you're using it for farming. Then you can use that lower grade fuel. I'm not. I'm just. I don't, wanna, I, don't, I don't want to open that uh, Pandora's box. Yeah. So I probably, it's probably too late. But I'm sure people are already like in the comments, like. Mm -hmm. No, no. It's stick to the good grade of diesel if you bought a truck that has a warranty. Well, you got you got to have a farm, and you got to use it on the farm. Okay, farm truck. Okay, but that's a whole different uh, discussion for another. David time. has a farm and a farm truck. Yes. See, he, we have a ranch, but we have no livestock. He actually has. 50x. So why don't we put cheap so diesel? We'll put cheap diesel inside of the uh, new Hyundai we got, right? <laughs> Hyundai's a gas. Oh, <laughs> bummer. Good or cheap diesel, it's gonna wreck it. <laughs> it's gonna wreck. It. Yeah, I know. So there you go, guys. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, check out TFL Studios where we have all of our uh, videos, podcasts. Uh, I don't think we have our TikToks up there, but just go to TFL Studios if you want to see our TikToks. And uh, Nathan, um, you know, I'm sure this will also end. Uh, yeah. yeah, give it a few months and we'll be back hopefully. I, I think that things yeah. will peak and then there'll be yeah. some resolution. You know, the entire world is changing a little bit. So guys, we'll have to roll with the changes, right? Yep. All right. See you next time. Ciao.